Welcome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about lean and agile project management for uh, leading large and complex information technology programs and projects. Feel free to visit my website so you can uh, learn a little bit more about me, download my lean and agile briefings, some of my videos and white papers on how to apply these concepts uh, to large and complex uh, U.S. government projects. I've uh, been in the information technology field for about 35 years now. Uh, my background is in computer science. Uh, my first uh, project was NASA Space Station. I'm a career systems and software engineering methodologist. And I wrote the first uh, textbooks on the return on investment of uh, CMMI as well as uh, Agile methods. Let's uh, begin with a classical quote by Helmuth von Moltke. Uh, he said, no battle plan ever survives first contact with the enemy because humans simply cannot see beyond the first uh, battle. And he said this nearly 150 years ago, which really sort of sets the context for today. Lean and Agile project management is about uh, adapting to these kinds of dynamic information technology projects and, and programs. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges facing today's information technology programs and projects. Obviously, the increasing global competition, extremely demanding customers, uh, system complexity, uh, increasing rate of technological change, you know, obsolete technology and skills, just the, the mass of legacy systems, the poor IT security, and obviously the long lead and cycle times. Probably the, the single largest factor uh, that challenges today's IT uh, programs and projects is, is probably extremely large scale, scope, size, and cost. Uh, the larger the program, the, the more defects it's going to suffer. Uh, the, the greater rate of change and, and turnover, and obviously productivity comes to a screeching halt. And so does success. The larger the program, you know, the harder it falls. One of the, the hidden challenges facing today's IT programs and projects are requirements defects. That is, over 75% of requirements are, are defective. Uh, not only that, but uh, over 75% of the requirements that you document aren't even needed at all. And it's all these factors, you know, together that, that, that cause over 75% of IT programs and projects to fail. And at the global level, that, that translates into about a trillion dollars in lost sales each year. So what is Agile project management? Well, it's a light, flexible, collaborative, and, and adaptive market-centric uh, model for uh, project management uh, based on principles of flexibility, lean thinking, product development flow, and of course, Agile methods using collaboration, teamwork, iterative development, and responding to change. It's, it's evolutionary, lightweight, uh, yet disciplined. Uh, project management model for technology intensive systems that, that maximizes business value. While Agile project management is uh, squarely based on principles of lean thinking, including the Agile manifesto, it has its own set of principles based on increasing return on investment, delivering reliable results, you know, planning for and expecting uncertainty, unleashing project creativity and innovation, creating a culture and environment where people can make a difference, boosting their productivity and performance, but most of all, improving project uh, and program effectiveness. However, uh, Agile project management is starkly different than traditional project management, whereas traditional projects are based on the iron triangle or triple constraints where requirements and scope is fixed and the cost and, and, and time or schedule are variable. We, we sort of kind of flip that model upside down and we make uh, cost and, and time fixed and we, we vary the features in order to maximize uh, you know, value instead of sticking to a plan. Well, the subject of today's talk is clear.
clearly agile program and project management, but we have to put agile project management in context. There are many dimensions of agility ranging from leadership to contracting uh, but, and strategic planning, but it also includes the, the systems and the, and the processes and the tools and the technologies themselves. So it's not just about agile methods or agile processes or agile teams, but it's about total organizational agility. Over the last 15 years, many models or methods of agile project and man management have emerged, So, but these are just a few of them, uh, like Radical Project Management by Rob Tomset, Extreme Project Management by Doug DiCarlo, Adaptive Project Management by uh, Bob Wysocki, you know, Agile Project Management itself by Jim Highsmith, but, but clearly the, the model that's sort of dominating today is a, is a model of Agile Project Management uh, developed by uh, Mark Layton. Today's uh, practices of Agile Project Management are clearly a convergence of, of, of two uh, competing concepts, a radical project management by Rob Tomset, as well as concepts in Scrum and Extreme Programming. Uh, Rob Tomset talked about, you know, having a clear concept and a vision, scope and objectives, focusing on the benefits as well as quality, having a project strategy, you know, documenting your risks and having simple task lists. Using Rob Tomset's model as a springboard, Doug DiCarlo built upon that and said, well, projects should have a, a clear vision, so you should spend time developing that vision. You know, a, a lightweight uh, project uh, planning phase called speculation, but, but not too heavy. And then, then lots of iteration and incremental and, and spiral development to innovate and, and sort of kind of converge on solution. And, and after a while, reevaluating your scope and, and if you succeed, you know, disseminating your results wide. Even Bob Wysocki, author of 21 books on project management, joined in the game. You know, he developed a model based on uh, lightweight scoping, lightweight planning, you know, feasibility studies, uh, and iterative development, uh, checking your results, and, and doing a project post-mortem review after after you were done. But as you can as you can see, clearly iterative development and, and evolutionary methods were at the heart of his approach. Like the uh, previous three models, uh, Jim Highsmith developed a model of Agile project management that was a little more closely aligned with Agile uh, methods such as Scrum and Extreme Programming uh, and not quite as, as, as reliant on traditional project management approaches based on a lightweight visioning phase, a lightweight planning phase, uh, incremental and iterative development, launching your product or service if it's successful and, and closing your project when you're done. However, it was Mark Layton that sort of codified uh, best practices in Agile project management. It was a little lighter than anything we've seen uh, here and very, very closely aligned with, with extreme programming in Scrum, where you would just have a, a simple vision statement, a simple product roadmap, a, a release plan, a short-term release plan, obviously a sprint plan for, for each iteration, you know, daily stand-ups, a, a sprint review, and a sprint retrospective. So let's examine uh, Mark Layton's lightweight agile project management approach. The first step was clearly developing a vision. You know, start by you know documenting your objectives, drafting the vision statement, you know, validating and revising it, and, and finalizing. You know, based on a simple elevator speech, you can see a simple example here. Uh, having a, a clear project vision is, is sort of central to project management, and, and thus the role of the agile project manager is not only to develop this but to constantly communicate it. The next major step is uh, developing a, a lightweight roadmap where we identify broad product and service features, we arrange them, we estimate them, and we, we determine high-level time frames. It's not a detailed schedule or WBS, and you can see a simple example here. Once again, this is, this is not a traditional project schedule. This is where we differentiate from traditional paradigms, although we might do a lightweight EVM. We weren't, we're not going to do a heavyweight traditional EVM on this type of a roadmap. 
Uh, the next major step may, may, be, may be to detail the roadmap uh, a little more in what's known as a release plan. Again, we, we decompose the features into uh, user stories and we create a release plan. We establish release goals and we prioritize those user stories, maybe set a release date and, and refine them and verify the release plan. You can see a simple example here. Once again, we might do some, some lightweight, what's known as lightweight agile earned value management. But again, this is not a detailed WBS schedule or we're not going to do detailed EVM on this. While a roadmap might cover one to two years, perhaps a release plan might cover about 90 days. A sprint plan covers the, the next two or, or three weeks. So we establish the goals and, and user stories for a one or two week period. And we, we decompose those stories into tasks. And we might even assign uh, hours or story points to those. Uh, and again, we might do some lightweight burn down, lightweight agile EVM on this. But again, this is not a detailed detail WBS. During each one or two week sprint, we're going to do a daily stand up. It's only 15 minutes where the entire team of maybe five to seven people uh, merely uh, say what they did yesterday, what they're going to do today and uh, any impediments that they might have. And, and you might burn down your uh, user stories and tasks a, a, as you complete them. Uh, again, we call this a sprint burn down chart. And we might even do some lightweight EVM on this. Remember, the focus of Agile project management as well as Agile methods is really on the product and the services, not on the documentation and the plan. So about every two weeks, we're actually going to demonstrate some, some real products or services that we've developed. We're going to prepare for that sprint review. We're actually going to hold that demo and we're going to collect feedback from the stakeholders, whether we're on the right track, whether we need to improve what we've done or whether we need to change direction. Extremely large traditional programs might actually take decades. Uh, and so you're not going to do a retrospective very often, uh, maybe for a very, very large one, maybe never in your lifetime. But in, in Agile methods, in Agile project management, you're going to actually do a retrospective every two weeks. So you're going to plan for that retrospective. You're going to hold it and you're actually going to identify what worked well, what didn't work well and what we need to improve. But you're going to prioritize those and determine how to make the highest uh, priority improvements. Uh, the traditional project manager might ask, well, what are the metrics that you use to measure your performance? A recent survey said that among Agile teams, uh, velocity, speed, or productivity was, was one of the most significant metrics. How fast you're burning down your backlog. Customer user satisfaction is clearly important, business value, but probably one of the hidden metrics is uh, customer delight as well as team morale. If your team is, is happy, then they're going to do a good job. Uh, the point uh, of this slide is to, to show the range of possible Agile project management metrics. Uh, you might do some simple you know, code metrics, which are going to be important for testing. Your, your traditional size and productivity metrics. Uh, obviously, your story points and sprint uh, burndowns and velocity. Uh, obviously, your Agile testing metrics are going to be extremely important, uh, as well as metrics for larger programs and, and your overall team health and happiness and customer delight, as well as business value. Uh, probably one of the more important lessons today is not to kill your Agile teams with quantitative measures, but uh, let's examine a few more of them. You might want to size your user stories, features, and epics. You might want to measure how fast you're burning down your, your releases as well as your iterations. And, and you might even want to show your, your, your progress on your features and your epics. But I think what's really important is conversation and collaboration and teamwork and delight. Uh, those are more important than any quantitative measure. Uh, a common mistake is to uh, bury uh, agile iterations and releases and deep within traditional linear waterfall schedules and WBSs. Uh, again, you don't want to do that. You want a high level roadmap, release plan, some iteration plans. And once you do that, you can translate some of those terms in terms of uh, epic feature user story into some, some lightweight earned value management that's become extremely popular, especially in, in the public sector. Once again, conversations, collaboration, visualization, these are the important elements of, of Agile project management. But nonetheless, automation is, is coming under increasing use. Obviously, it started with, with simple you know, Kanban and, and Scrum board visualizations. 
uh, in, in Jira or version one or rally or even, you know, Microsoft Visual Studio services. But but more and more, you know, testing tools and DevOps tools are, are becoming uh, very, very important. So let's switch gears a little bit more towards the, the the business value or the benefits of Agile project management. Obviously, it's the ability to change priorities, unlike traditional plans. Uh, clearly, in increased team productivity, increased you know visibility and alignment to business objectives. But like we've been emphasizing, the increased team morale, you know, happiness. If if your team is happy, then then you're you're they're going to actually perform very well, and your customers will be happy too. Agile teams are about 10 to 20 times faster than traditional ones, and their quality is better. That translates into lower costs and, and, and higher benefits. Uh, therefore, Agile teams are almost 10 times uh, better in terms of return on investment than traditional ones. And, and when you switch towards the automated testing you know, disciplines like DevOps, uh, that return on investment increases sharply. We see some of the benefits of Agile project management in large-scale studies. For the same scope, uh, we, we see that Agile projects are about 60% uh, less expensive, uh, require you know uh, about 40% less staff. They're, uh, on average, even for large uh, projects, they were about 25% faster in these very, very early studies. But most importantly, uh, their quality was, was almost 10 times better than traditional teams. Here's another study of Agile project management performance by the Standish Group. Uh, surprisingly, Agile projects, right out of the box, even basic teams were about three times more successful than traditional ones. But but more importantly, uh, they actually were, were challenged less often. But and even even surprisingly, they they, they actually succeeded uh, far more often than traditional projects did. Uh, one of the biggest questions was was who is using Agile project management today? Over 95% of global IT projects use Agile methods, uh, including Google, Primavera, you know, uh, Class Three certified medical device manufacturers, law enforcement, uh, the U.S. DoD. Uh, today, over 80% of public sector projects also uh, use Agile methods as well. I think some of the early dogmas surrounding Agile project management was that if you had a really mission critical system, you wanted to use traditional project management. Uh, and if you just had a rapid prototype uh, that, that wasn't going to hurt anybody, that's when you used Agile project management. But today we, we know better. Uh, traditional project management is really best when, when you have for operations in extremely low risk, low change situations. But when you have really high risk, fast changing mission critical IT projects that's when you want to use agile project management where methods like scrum and extreme programming focused on on team level development uh, and and today's subject has really been on on programming and project level uh, uh, management. Uh, more and more what's becoming popular is, is Agile portfolio management. So uh, models like the scaled Agile framework are, are becoming uh, increasingly popular for managing entire enterprise government agencies, portfolios, and very large programs. Uh, today's focus is really about agile leadership. So today's agile program and project managers need to be leaders, not controllers. They need to establish uh, guiding visions and, and cultures of collaboration and cooperation and very, very lightweight, simple rules and governance and uh, promote simple agile practices and continuous improvement and just individual ma mastery and, and, and individual perfection. So let's go ahead and begin wrapping up and summarizing what we've talked about. You know, agile project management doesn't mean deliver it now and fix it later. It's a lightweight yet disciplined approach to product and service development, which reduces cost, risk, waste, and 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 improves quality. You know, you have to involve your customers early and off, often. You have to simplify your scope. You have to use uh, iterative and incremental development, uh, uh, a big focus on quality and, and testing, and, and just, just continuous improvement. Let's close with a quote by uh, Robert Wysocki, author of 21 books on Agile project management, with yet another one on the way. He said, 
the world of traditional project management belongs to yesterday. Bob said, don't waste your time using traditional project management on 21st century projects. Here's just a few of the many books on Agile Project Management, Radical Project Management by Rob Tomset, Extreme Project Management by Doug DiCarlo, Adaptive Project Framework by Bob Wysocki, Agile Project Management by Jim Highsmith, and of course, uh, Agile Project Management by Mark Layton. Thank you for joining me here today. Please visit my website, davidfrico.com, to learn more about me. Grab my uh, Lean and Agile briefs, my videos, my white papers, and uh, thank you very much for your time.